How does it feel the day after becoming the first person to run Africa? It's, uh, it's absolutely bananas. Nothing's really set in for me, I don't think, yet. Um, it's all quite overwhelming, like the amount of support and the amount of people that have come out. It's just, I mean, I'm still in like airy fairy mode, I think, but um, hopefully in the next few days, it will kind of, everything will settle down a bit and we'll be able to digest it a bit more. So like, where did the inspiration come from? Like, why Africa? I'd sort of run in the full length of Africa had never been done before. It's a big continent. Mm. It's not very well traveled to. I'd had a great time traveling to Africa before. And I thought like that, I'd, I would love to give it a go. Um, yeah, that was like the initial idea. It just took a long, long time to get in the works, but got there eventually. And what were the charities that you were raising money for? So I was raising for the running charity in Sandblast, a charity I've done work with for a number of years. And it's all about trying to engage young people in sport, um, especially young people going through a hard time, mm. vulnerable young people in a variety of different situations. Um, but like, I'm a big believer that sport can really turn it around for people and it can be the spark that really ignites um, you know, a positive change in someone's life and everyone at the charity believes the same. So that's what we kind of, we try to, try to give people is, is, is that spark through sport. Um, to make a positive impact in their life, yeah. And then uh, Sandblast as well is um, a charity that does work within the refugee camps in the Sahara region. It's one of the least known refugee camps in Africa. It's massive. And they run educational programs there and cultural programs there. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's great to be able to support both of those charities. I think at the current this current time, it's almost three quarters of a million. Yeah. Well, I might have gone past that now, to be yeah, honest. Like... You know, uh, the do donations in the last couple of weeks especially have just been through the roof and uh, I think one of the, the the best things about it as well is there's so many you know fivers tenors 20 quid so so many people have donated incredibly grateful and uh, also really excited to be able to show people the actual impact that their donations have in the next coming years because I work with both the charities going to continue to and be able to show like this is what the money is done um, it's really special what are you going to do now with your first rest day, I guess, uh, in, <laughs> in almost a year. Like. I've been doing a lot of media and stuff all day. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go to Tunis tonight and have a meal with the family, friends and family, um, catch up with everyone properly because it's just been a total buzz for the last 24 hours. Um, and then, you know, we fly back home tomorrow and life back home. If you could give Russ, who started this challenge, yeah. any advice, what would it be and why? Yeah, it's a tough one, man. When I started, I, I, I knew I was heading out into the unknown. Um, I'd probably just say, like, get ready for a big slog, man. This is going to, you know, that compound interest really gets going after a few, you know, 100 days, 200 days, things really start to take a toll. Um, so just keep going. It's probably what I'd say, just power through, bro. What inspired you to start prioritising your health and well-being? So when I was a bit younger, I definitely didn't prioritise that at all. Um, had a, developed quite a lot of bad habits when I was like late teens kind of age and got quite overweight, had a, had a quite a bad stint gambling, drink, used to drink a lot of alcohol. Um, but I think what I kind of hit a realisation is that all of these things, you know, you pay your interest on them, pay the price for it in the end. And that's, you know, I first met, uh, one of my boys was like come and run a half marathon and that was kind of the big shift for me where I started wanting to be in better shape and all of these other things. Um, yeah, so I'd say like around that kind of time. It's, it, it, sometimes, you know, things have to get bad enough for you to be like, let's make some changes. What were your, like some of the stand up moments from the run? Wow, uh, so many. I think was some of the stuff that stands out for me the most is when like we were, well, when I was joined, running by a lot of people. So like in Windhoek, we were joined by a ton of people. Um, in Angola, there were so many people that tried to help us, especially after the robbery. Uh, but like every country we've been to, I think the, the, the most outstanding things have been just being on the receiving end of some like amazing human kindness um, from people that kind of had no reason to help us. They just, we're just some tourists bowling through and they've gone out of their way just to, just to you know, just to try and help, mm. which has been lovely. I bet it does restore that faith in humanity, for sure. Absolutely, and it's like, you know, we're from di totally different countries, totally different cultures, and, uh, but that, you know, we're all human. Which fuel products have been essential for you over the journey? 
honestly, I think people would be surprised how much I use all of them. Um, I love the ready to drinks. They're, it's just maximum efficiency. Um, especially like you know, for me, I know my situation is probably a bit different to most people at home, but like, you know, wake up in the morning and I've got to go and run 60K or something. And I'm like, I've got no time. And a lot of the time before, so I remember you were coming on day like 92, but before that, I'd just be reaching for anything, you know, had food poisoning a lot, just basically fill my belly with anything I can get hold of, which normally was not very nutritional. But having Huel was like the base of my diet completely changed the game for me a lot. It's getting those calories in as well. Yeah. For you. I mean, you're burning, you're saying at times 8,000. Yeah, 8,000 recently. It's like, drink them. As soon as I got hold of them, they were going. Like, no, tomorrow. Um, and then the hot meals as well. I'm a big fan of the hot meals. I think you guys have smashed the hot meals, can't I? Cajun pasta, yeah. that was a absolute winner. Uh, the pasta bolognese, or the mac and cheese. Mm. The, mac, so the mac and cheese, all the boys would rob the mac and cheese off me. Is that good? And I was like, boys, <laughs> leave my mac and cheese. That's mine. <laughs> trying to rob it. If you had your own ready to drink, like yeah. Ross Cook limited edition red drink, what would be the flavour? Like a strawberry white chocolate kind of cheesecake vibe or a strawberry tart maybe. Right that. Yeah. Right that. Like a bit out there, you know? <laughs> When did you start taking your, like your nutrition seriously? It's it's been quite difficult, especially out here, because it's really been hard to, to plan what we're gonna be able to eat. And obviously we're moving from country to country all the time. There's not it's hard to get a staple of the diet because, you know, this week we're pulling up to this village and getting this type of bread and then we're getting this type of meat and it's always changing. So, um, you know, like having Huel come on in a, about three months, like I think even if you look at the photos, my weight kind of stabilized decently well throughout that period. Cause at the start I was about 74 kilos. And then in the first three months, I've just lost a ton of weight. And then Huel have come on, we've kind of steadied out. I've obviously still losing weight. It's hard to eat 8,000 calories a day. And were you a fan of Huel before the challenge? Do you know what? I hadn't actually tried much Huel before. Um, but, I mean, thank God you lot came on. Because <laughs> absolutely changed the game for me whilst I've been here. Um, yeah, man. Were there any moments where a particular product helped you through a situation? So, yeah, I mean, the, the ready to drinks save my, save my bacon. Because when I'm on a time crunch, that's the go-to. But also, like, all, that is the whole fuel thing is just it's so easy and quick and you can grab it I think that's just the biggest thing for me you know I'm running sometimes 12 13 hours of the day I don't have any time the nutrition bars they're always good you get some calories in straight away um, but all of them man like the daily greens they actually I didn't get the daily greens until a little bit later on because I think they didn't weren't released in the UK until yeah, fairly too. recently yeah. but um, they've really like sorted my stomach out because I eat quite a lot of sweets and sh high sugar stuff when I'm running um, and it kind of upsets my stomach a lot but they're like the probiotics and stuff in there I think really really uh, just like settled everything down. And you've spoken about the convenience factor obviously with fuel it's all very quick but the particular nutrition that it provides do you think you notice like a difference in like how you were feeling or the actual like nutrients you were getting? Massively man like the 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 jumping quality of just eating whatever I was eating before, the local stuff, and then having that Huel just completely stabilised everything. Um, if you could have one Huel product for the rest of your life, what would it be? I think it would be the mac and cheese. Yeah, mac and cheese? Oh, mate. It's, yeah. I rate that, I rate that. I think yeah. most people would say ready to drinks, but you're probably one of the biggest fans of hot and savoury yeah, out there. Yeah, really, yeah. yeah. Mate, I think the hot and savoury is so good, man. Mm. And, I, and especially for, like, adventure stuff, you know, like, the, the adventure food out there, I've had it before, it's not great, but this is like, you know what you're getting, you're getting your protein, you're getting the carbs, you're getting all the vitamins and minerals straight there in a hot meal, which like, it's a bit of a morale boost as well, having a nice hot meal. Yeah. Perfect. What guidance would you offer someone starting their, their fitness or running journey? I, I would say, you know, just go and get your head out the door. That's the most important thing. A lot of times people can get a bit bogged down with like, what do I need? Do I need this? Do I need that? But it's like, get out get some action in and you know everyone's got to start somewhere I remember when I first went out running when I after I was you know out of shape I could couldn't run around the block without stopping mm. so you know we we literally all start somewhere and don't 
be too hard on yourself, comparing yourself to everyone out there. Just compare yourself to you yesterday, give you your best go and carry on making movements. I love that, carry on making movements. Yeah. I love that. Mate, I, I remember the, so the first marathon I signed up for was Brighton quite a few years ago, but I could, when I finished Brighton Marathon, I was on the floor, I could not stand up. So like, it's not like I was just came to be like this. Is you, know, you put the work in over a long amount of time and you, you, know, you can go from a place to a place, you can improve yourself and you know, that's what it's all about really. What word would summarise the journey you've been on and uh, why? <laughs> beautiful struggle. And why would you use those? Because it's been a struggle and there's no denying that. I've really found it harder a lot of times and I've, I've been you know, wishing for it to be over a lot because I've been in so much pain or you know, just struggling to get through the day. Um, but there is also so much beauty in that because there's so much growth, you learn so much, um, you experience so many new things, have met some amazing people, learned about so many different cultures. So it's been hard, but it's been worth it. Can you talk us through what happened exactly um, with situations like the kidnapping and mm. how were you able to motivate yourself after something like that happens? The days after that were probably the hardest days of the mission. Um, and, and I think that really tested us all as a team as well. And it, 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 we had to change the way we done things after that. Um, those were the only times of the mission where I ever, where like stopping ever even entered my head. It, didn't, it wasn't a thought that lasted very long at all. I realised I can't, the only way out is to get into Tunisia. But um, yes, really difficult moments in there. We're saying that there's obviously lots of positives now you've finished and what's next for Russ Cook? <laughs> um, obviously under 24 hours since finishing, so processing. Yeah, I mean, adventure is always going to be a part of my life. Um, always going to be trying to push in one area or another. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be up to next, but I've got a long list of things that I might fancy a gobble at. So um, once I'm parked up, rested, got a clear mind again, then um, we'll, we'll, we'll see, what's, see what's on the horizon. I, I can't wait. And from all of us at Huel, it's been beautiful to watch your journey. And Thank we're, you, we're happy we played some sort of role. Guys, um, you honestly, couldn't have asked for a better sponsor. Um, it's been absolute mega to have you on. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Top stuff, bro. Good to see you. Thank you, man.